So, I have been practicing astral projection recently, and getting back into the practice, it's a lot of fun. I'd say it's a very, very interesting experience. I've had some interesting things happen, and uh, many experiences, but today, in this video, I want to teach you my technique, or at least, not my technique, the technique that I use. I want to teach you the Monroe technique. So, today, we're talking about the Astral projection technique of the Monroe technique. But first, who is Robert Monroe? For people that don't know, Robert Monroe started out as a radio broadcast executive. He was known for his research into altered consciousness through binaural beats. He was also known for founding the Monroe Institute to study consciousness and out-of-body experiences. As a child, he experienced many intense mental and spiritual phenomena that led him to have many out-of-body experiences. He wrote many books on his experiences, such as Journeys Outside of the Body, Far Journey, and Ultimate Journey. Some amazing reads. You have to go and read some of them. So today, we're going to go over his technique and how to get the most out of it. So first, this is a six-step technique. Very easy. So the first step, or step zero, is the prep stage. The prep stage, first, there are some things I want you to remember. Nothing in the astral realm can hurt you. It is a mental or dream-like place. You're not there physically. It's a non-physical realm, so you can't be physically hurt. The only thing to be worried about, or not worry, but the only thing to keep in mind, is that fear is the biggest issue because Fear is our biggest barrier. It stops us from being able to leave our body and stops us from being able to do certain things within the astral realm. So getting around your fear of it and getting around your fear of the unknown is very important for astral projection. So some things to do for preparations. Find a place that you won't be disturbed. Get comfortable. Go to the bathroom, brush your teeth, get into comfy pajamas, Get into a comfy chair, bed, or mat, or anywhere that you feel like is where you would like to meditate. Don't set yourself a time limit. If you have to, like if you have an hour or 30 minutes, then sure, use whatever time you got. But it's a process, not a race. Don't tell yourself, I'm going to astral project in the next 15 minutes. Just say, it'll take as long as it needs to, and I'm going to... I'm going to take as much time as I want to do this. There is a little bit of a strange rule where if you say I'm going to finish my technique in like five minutes and I will experience something within five, in five minutes, your subconscious mind will help as much as it can within that crunch time. But just remember, it's a process, not a race. Let yourself have fun. So the timing of day can also be very important depending on your energy levels. What time of day is the best time to practice for you? For me, since I work 9 to 5, I get up a little bit early and I meditate as soon as I wake up. Or at least I wake up and I you know, go and I wash my face and then I go and I meditate. That's because I have the time. I also make sure that I get all the sleep that I need. So on that, are you too tired? Are you well rested enough? Because if you're not well rested, you're probably just going to go ahead and fall, as fall asleep during the meditation. So the last thing, just be. Let your mind wander. Don't give any thoughts to the energy. or Don't give any energy to your thoughts. Uh, don't interact with them. And don't deliberately ignore them. Just sort of watch them, acknowledge that they're there, and let them be until they go on their own. So then the first step is to relax. In this stage, after we're done prepping, find a position in your bed, comfy chair, yoga mat, wherever you're meditating. Preferably a place different than where you sleep. If you're in a bed, a different position normally than how you sleep. So if you sleep like normally with your head to the back bar, back wall, maybe slightly angled, or just a position that doesn't feel normal to normal sleep. You still want to get comfortable, though. Then stretch out if you need. Let yourself get into a comfy position. Move around. Just 
let yourself feel comfy. Uh, move until, you know, just wiggle all the, all the tension out. Then I have this thing where I call it the 555 breathing, me breathing method which it's five sets of breathing in for five seconds, hold for a moment, and then breathe out for five seconds. Then do the muscle tensing to relax your body full further. So for example, you tense up your hands for a second, and then you release them. And you tense up your arms, and then you release them. Tense your face, and then you release them. And you actually notice that through doing the whole tensing thing, you actually relax a lot faster, a lot quicker. So the next one, I like this background because I edited it myself. <laughs> move towards sleep. Now, what do we mean when we say move towards sleep? You're not literally moving. You're keeping your eyes closed and you're staying still. So the current goal with this is we're trying to relax and drift into a state, bet a state between sleep and wakefulness. That's what I mean when I say move towards sleep. What I mean when I say move towards sleep is... Allow yourself to think of and drift into a deeper state. Drift towards that relaxation of sleep. So let your thoughts drift. As I mentioned, do not interact or ignore them. Watch them like a movie and let them be and let them go. Let yourself drift into a deep relaxation towards sleep, but not into sleep. The next state, enhance the feeling of sleep. When you enhance the feeling of sleep, as you drift, there will be times when you almost fall asleep. But if you are well rested and you are at your perfect time of day, which can be, like I said, in the morning, or if you have free time in the afternoon, like you have either lunch or you have a late night job or whatever, if you have some time in the middle of the day, or if you find that you're best at 3 p.m., Wherever you have a plateaued energy where you're not on top of the world or about to fall asleep, you will drift and you will almost fall asleep. But, well, first, you will. this is the feeling of briefly dropping into unconsciousness or really, really close to it. And this is okay. This is actually good. This is what we're looking for. Our goal is to be aware of the fact that this can happen and catch ourselves when we notice it. I want you to keep enjoying and focusing on relaxing and just focusing on observing, be an observer. Observe when you're about to fall asleep and then when you are, redirect yourself, sort of notice it and when you notice it, you will come back. You will come back to a more focused state and redirect your mind back to observing your thoughts, back to observing what's going on. When we notice that we are about to fall asleep, yeah, redirect yourself back to your thoughts, back to your mind. Being tired makes this harder to notice because you don't notice and you end up falling asleep. And remember, don't feel bad if we fall asleep. Don't feel like you failed if you weren't keeping focus 100% of the time. Feel accomplished when you catch yourself because this is actually what we're looking for. We're looking for this feeling of dropping towards sleep because we're trying to get to that very deep state in between sleep and awake. Every time you catch yourself, you're able to go deeper towards sleep than before without actually falling into sleep. You also, the deeper you go, you may feel some new sensations such as uh, falling, floating, spinning, or a total lack of sensations. You may even start to see some visuals or slight sounds, maybe even some very, you know, some vivid images. Uh, make sure to continue to maintain this state by observing and letting your thoughts flow, like I said. So the next step is the transition stage. This is also known as the vibrational state. And vibrations are a little bit misleading, the word vibrations. It's a little hard to describe, but this state is best described as a feeling of weightlessness and noticeable tingling. Or other things, it can be something completely different. There was a time where I heard that someone heard uh, what could be best described as 
the sound of a bell or a, a, a whistle from a train, and it got louder and louder and louder, more intense. So by, by using your will, once we start to notice these vibrations or these sensations, these intense sensations, we can increase or decrease these with our will. If you're unable to, try to just keep being an observer and drifting deeper until you get back to it. This vibration state is basically a checkpoint. Once you've reached the vibration state for the first time, it's much, much easier to get back to. So no rush trying to get here. Take your time. Again, it's a process. Make sure that you're doing the technique cor correctly and that you're having fun doing the technique. Yes, the ultimate goal of astral projection is what we want. Leaving our body is the goal, but it's more important that you enjoy the process of getting there because you will have to practice and do this process a few times before astral projection becomes normal. So if you hate doing the practice, you're never gonna leave your body. Get tolerant or even enjoy. I would recommend enjoying the practice but make sure you're doing it right, because if you're not doing it right, you're not going to leave your body. Again, it's a, ra it's a process, not a race. In this state, it's, it starts to get very easy to create very vivid I images, visuals, and even experiences. These can be very informative or even entertaining. I have a lot of stories that I can share, but I'll share that in another video. So, continued. Now that we've reached this state of vibration, what do we do? It is possible to hold on to this state for almost an indefinite amount of time until you have to get up and go to the restroom or something. But once we notice the vibrations, what we want to look for is to increase them. We want to increase them and or let them increase as much as they possibly can. And when I say as much as we can, Sometimes this means allowing the vibrations to get to a point where they are even debilitating or downright disorienting. So we can intentionally increase them with will. It's a bit hard to explain how to do this in video and, and text and voice and all that, but I recommend experimenting with increasing and decreasing. First, get there. I would recommend recommend First, if you haven't ever experienced vibrations, or if you've only experienced a few times, get back to it. The first step is trying to get back to it. Once you get back to it, and once you're able to get back to it again and again and again, it'll be much easier to get back to it. Then you can start experimenting with it. So if you don't have it already, go ahead and get yourself a journal and start writing down what thoughts or experiments or things that you're learning from experimenting with these vibrations, with trying to increase them. Pretty soon, controlling the intensity will become very natural. These vibrations may get very intense and even disorienting. Don't be afraid. This is very, this is natural. This is normal for first time astral projection practitioners. So what is happening? What's happening? Why vibrations? So essentially what's happening is when you start to feel the vibrations, that is essentially your consciousness is starting to change its frequency. Now, the physical body and the astral body are connected, but they are on two separate planes of existence. The plane of existence that the physical body is in is much denser than the one that the astral realm is in. So what is happening is your consciousness can shift from different dimension to different dimension. It can even tap into, you know, mental thoughts. Like your mind can see the, into the mental realm or something like that. But it can also shift into the astral realm, which is controlled by mental and thoughts. So essentially what's happening is that your consciousness is shifting from the physical realm your physical body into your astral body. And since your astral body is much higher in frequency, it has you have to change your frequency to fit the astral, 
So that's why it's that vibrations or those intense frequencies, those intense vibrations are basically just dialing up. So for example, if you're trying to start a car in the cold, the reason why I say this is because we are beginners, because we are new at this, it takes a while for our bot for the astral body to get reacclimated, for the consciousness to get reacclimated to the astral body. So it's like trying to start a car in the cold that hasn't been on for a while. It's gonna it's gonna take a while to get back to it. But then once you start driving the car again, it's gonna get, you know, it's gonna be warmed up, it's gonna be easier to turn on again, etc. So yeah, like I said, once it's easier to warm up, it's easier and faster to start again. So step number five, partial separation. Partial separation. Once the vibration sensations have calmed down or even subsided, it's time to stretch the astral body. The astral body may be stiff and or still connected to the physical body, especially as beginners. The best way to disconnect is by testing the waters. What do we mean by that is begin with one limb. Begin by extending out and stretching with one arm or one leg. Just sort of experiment and feel out. Imagine even extending your limb. A lot of the astral realm is through thoughts and visualizations. So visualize or imagine your limb extending to feel something. If you're close to a wall or on the floor, go ahead and try to reach out to touch it and analyze what it feels like. Get familiar with the feeling of, get familiar with all the feelings, what your arm feels like it's doing. Get familiar with what the table or what the ground or the wall feels like. And then try it with another limb and then another. This may be awkward at first, especially since it'll be the first time experiencing this. But it'll become natural with each prime time you practice and experience it. Next step, and the final step, is total separation. With total separation, it is now time to finally leave the body. We have finally gotten there. Now that you have one arm or leg out, try disconnecting completely. You want to fully disassociate yourself from your physical body, and there are many ways that we can do this. For example, visualize yourself floating up and out of bed. The stereotypical way of leaving your body is floating up and out of it. Or visualize yourself sitting up out of bed normally. Or visualize yourself rolling out of bed and onto the floor. It won't hurt. Remember, the astral realm can't hurt. Experiment with other techniques of separation as well if you find one specifically. There's one that is the, the rope technique. Imagine a rope and you're reaching out to the rope and you're climbing it. Sometimes separation happens on its own through other means. So, for example, you could potentially experience uh, short blackouts and waking up somewhere else. Straight teleportation. You're just all of a sudden there. Going through a dark tunnel with a light at the end. The stereotypical idea of death. You know, you're just separating from the body and many other experiences. If separation doesn't happen, then try and do more partial separations, or maybe you're just going to have to practice again to fully get out. Now, number seven, the extra step is enjoy your experience. Enjoy your experience. Once, you have, once you're out of your body, have fun. Here are some tips. Keep your focus forwards on the experience. Make it positive. If you have, uh, if you think about your body, then you may get pulled right back in because the astral realm and your astral body run off of thoughts. So remember to keep a good mindset because this realm, again, runs off of thoughts, like I've said multiple times, I guess. What you think is where you go. What you think is what you do. So, and you can even think of stuff and it just appears in front of you. If anything freaks you out too much or something is too scary or feels too dangerous, you can always think of your body and you'll be back in it. You'll be back in the physical realm completely safe. Now, one other thing I wanted to mention, one other fun little tip that's not on my PowerPoint, is when you're there, 
if anything feels fuzzy, call out to the realm and say, clarity now, or I command clarity now, and then it'll bring you clarity. And again, just have fun. Keep a positive mindset. And enjoy. And in conclusion, to recap, step zero is prep your environment where you can get comfortable and not be disturbed. Step two, relax by doing some deep breathing and muscle relaxing. Step three, let your mind drift. Observe your wandering thoughts while you drift towards sleep and deep relaxation. Step three, enhance the feeling of trance by continuing to drift in between sleep and wakefulness. You're not really doing much here. You're just continuing to observe like in step two. It's just slightly different. Step four, once you start noticing vibrations or tingling, let them increase or increase them with your will if that's possible until they subside. Step five, once the vibrations subside, Feel around your environment with one leg or arm using your imagination or visualization. Step six, once you have felt the nearby environment and feel familiar with the feeling of that single separation, try to fully separate. Step seven, enjoy and you will be able to come back when you're ready. You will always be able to come back. Now here is a plan and a take home meditation that I'm going to give to you. So for the take-home meditation, now that you know the steps for the technique and how to astral project, or what you need to do to be able to astral project, now I have some homework for you if you really want to leave your body. This is some stuff that you actually got to practice. Step one, get a journal, or if you already have a journal, put a section in your journal specifically for astral projection, only for astral projection. Step number two, write down the steps that or in this video, in your new section. Step three, find the time of day that works best for you, that you have plateaued energy. Basically, just find the best time that works for you. If you only have to, if you work, and you only have like an hour after you get home for this practice, then that is perfect. That is perfectly fine. If you're able to get good sleep, and get an hour of undisturbed time before you have to get ready for work, that's even more perfect. If you have the free time, even better. But find a time that works best for you to practice meditation without falling asleep. Step number four, set yourself a goal to practice this meditation once a day for a month, no matter the results. It's okay for you to skip, It's not skip, but it's okay if there is a day that you can't get to it. No matter what happens, try and practice and see what happens. Give yourself a month to experience something. If it doesn't happen the first day, that's fine. That's okay. Give yourself a week. You may, you know, depending on how practiced you are in meditation or how well or how correctly you do the steps and the technique, you may actually experience some fun stuff. You may not leave your body after you we after a week but you'll definitely will experience some stuff maybe you'll even experience a partial separation and it's like wow i i got half the way there might as well go all the way and finally if you have any questions feel free to comment and i'd be more than happy to answer and if i get enough comments i'd be more than happy to answer them in a video so thank you for watching Ghost dog. I thought that was relevant. I also thought it was cute and I wanted to see it. That's your reward for sticking this long. You get ghost dog. So, thank you so much for watching. So, thanks again for watching. I very much enjoy and appreciate that you got this far through the video. I hope you found it informative and I hope you found something out of it. If Again, if you have any, any questions, feel free to comment down below. If you liked this and want to get more tips, want to see more, I'm going to definitely talk more about not just astral projection, but even lucid dreaming, other meditations, stuff like that. I, I vibe with this stuff very deeply. And yeah, go ahead and subscribe if you want to. If you want to see more of this sort of stuff, I would love to have you back and see you and uh, or <laughs> you watch me tell you fun stuff. 
And yeah, if you liked this, go ahead and leave a like. It very much helps. And share. That would be even better. So thanks again. I appreciate you. I appreciate you staying here. And I will see you in the next one for more fun stuff. Peace.